So Replit Designer literally just dropped powered by Gemini 3. And so today we are gonna test it out and see if it actually lives up to the hype. So they claim that you can go from idea to pixel perfect design in less than two minutes. So no Figma, no tokens, no paid designer. Now I have zero design skills and so I rely pretty heavily on the language models and my intuition to know does this actually look professional or not so i'm going to give myself exactly 30 minutes to play around with this thing and see number one can we actually build a professional looking mobile app design from scratch giving just the features with no design direction and then number two can we actually clone a known professional web application using replit designer so let's get into it so we've started our countdown timer and what we're going to do is we're going to go in and we are just going to copy all of our features. So I have 10 different features here for this app, which is an AI first personal trainer. And so we're going to hop in here. All I've prompted is we're building an AI first personal training app for iOS, make it feel premium, but minimalist. So pretty vague instructions. We're going to hit start designing. And so this is going to pop you into a pretty familiar interface, which is a standard vibe coding interface. So this is kind of like vibe designing, no backend functionality or anything like that's gonna be hooked up. This is purely designing our screens. And so I'm gonna pause this while it runs and then we will look at the first draft that we get and talk about it. So this thing's running through and preparing things. One thing that I do think is pretty cool is it, it generates assets for you for use in the app. So like hero images and onboarding hero screens and like all of that type of stuff they generate for you which is pretty cool sometimes it actually generates the images sometimes it's finding stock of those images but it it should make the app feel a little bit more polished so this thing's been running for about a minute and a half so far and it's now just beginning the actual implementation that being said i did load it up with like 10 different features so i would expect that it might take a little bit longer all right so this thing just finished and this is our first onboarding screen which honestly feels a little bit lame. Um, I've run this thing a few times and this is the worst output that I've gotten so far. So we'll see if we can improve this, but I'm just gonna go through. The little animations and things like that are pretty nice. So I'm gonna move through here and see what happens. Um, we can tailor this a little bit more to ask more specific questions, but the overall like screen that we get dumped into, I'm, I mean, I think this is a pretty nice design. Like I've seen professionally designed workout apps that look worse than this and so i mean i'm pretty happy with what it looks like overall but let's see just how interactive it is and how well it followed our instructions so for the dashboard there should be the workout card for today the progress tracking showing our current training block and some quick stats so if we go back here you can see where we are at our streak current training block today's workout um doesn't actually do anything but that's fine uh, we have this little chat icon down here we go into our plan. So this is, obviously this would be on a phone. So this scroll bar wouldn't be here, but it is keeping track of our actual training plan, which is pretty cool. And again, I like the overall like styling. I might change up the colors and stuff, but I, I do like how it's starting to design things. It's showing us where we actually are in our process, what the objectives of this training block are. Uh, here's what the actual workout screen looks like. If we hit start workout, it brings us into a thing here so again we're about we're about nine minutes in at this point and it's okay right so we have this coach where we can say um i'm sore right and it'll go back and forth with us and actually modify our plan so it has the it has the scaffolding of something good but let's see if we can move through and actually make this a little bit better so the first thing i want to improve is this actual onboarding screen and so let's go back and see if there were any other um it should do this so i'm going to pause real quick and type this in and then we'll we'll pop back in a second so i'm basically telling this thing that the onboarding screen feels weak and again this is very vibey i mean i'm not being too specific here let's improve it with badges for quick responses so like what's your training history you know one to three years five plus less than one whatever and change the overall design. Like this top section feels really disjointed and, and weak to me. And then I'm just gonna repeat back what some of the instructions were for that initial that initial feature. 
and we will see what we uh, get out the other side here in a second. So it made some of the changes, but it, it honestly made it worse. So I'm going to just go back and forth a little bit with it and just tell it to um, to make those updates because that image that it made is actually great. So it is still struggling with this. It's it's not doing the background like we're asking it to. I will say it hasn't had this struggle every other time I've tried to use it since yesterday. So we're just going to take a few seconds here. We're only about 13 minutes in so far, and we'll see what we uh, get done. I don't want to lose too much time on this one. If it ends up failing on this one, then it's just it's failed, and we'll move on to the next piece. All right, so it's really not getting that. We'd probably have to get more detailed in how we're prompting it, but I'm going to use this uh, like annotation feature. I selected this element on the screen right here, and I'm just asking it to move it down to the bottom of, of this, and then we will move on and start refining the other pieces inside of the app. All right, guys, so I got pretty frustrated with this onboarding experience. So my theory is that maybe it can't handle all of the context that I'm passing it, and so I kicked off an identical chat in a new one, uh, just to see if giving just the first feature and going feature by feature ends up with it building it in a better way. And so this is the output that we have here. Obviously, this is still jacked up, um, but I don't want to lose a bunch of time on trying to just fix the positioning of that element. So I'm going to move through this now. Say I want to build muscle, intermediate experience. I have access to a full gym. I can train for five days. Let's say I have shoulder issues. It's going to construct me my perfect plan. And let's see, has a nice little thing here. I mean, that's pretty cool. But then it doesn't really have anywhere to dump me into. And so I'm going to go now and I am going to just paste in. I'm going to try maybe two of these now. I'm going to paste these into that same chat. And then we'll see what we get out of this one. Now we are a little, we're about 22 minutes in. I messed this up and did 30 hours instead. Oops. So we're going to give this a few more minutes and then we're going to hop in and see if we can clone an app from scratch. So I've queued up all of the uh, remaining features here. And so while this is running in the background, I'm going to go in and I'm going to see if we can clone a popular app. So we're going to go into design and I'm going to say, clone me the superhuman AI email software in a web application form. So let's see what that does. Um, these tools have traditionally been pretty good at cloning most of the time, but I'm curious to see how professional of a design we can get out of this Replit Designer slash Gemini 3.0 and how quickly it goes. So let's see if we can actually get this thing done in two minutes. And so this was actually about two minutes on the dot. And I must say, pretty impressive UI, like really clean, really nice use of accenting. Obviously, this is cloning something that it knows exists. And so we need to take that into account. But the overall design of things here, I think, is really, uh, really smooth. Um, so we can move through, look at all the different features. Uh, let's see if these like shortcuts actually work. I mean, that's really dope. It has this command palette is like already kind of built into this thing. So I think the the web app I'm most impressed with, and that, that's true with a lot of these tools, they seem to be infinitely better at designing web apps than they are mobile apps. And that probably comes back to the training data, I would imagine. But let's see if we can come through here now and maybe add a few extra features into this. So let's say we want to add in, add in more of the keyboard command shortcuts as well as a compose feature based on superhuman AI. So we're going to kick it off on that other task. And while it's doing that, we're going to pop back and see what we've got so far out of this other one. So I had queued up two features at a time and a few of them are done now. So we'll move really quickly back through this onboarding experience. I'm just going to type in some basic stuff. Now, obviously, none of this is hooked up to a database or anything like that. But one of the things that is pretty cool is that they have a built-in feature here where we can just go and actually convert this thing into an actual app, which is pretty sweet that we can do that. So here we got dumped into the main home screen. I don't love all the colors being used, but I think that partially comes down to me prompting it a little bit more, a little bit better. 
But this is our main home screen. So again, it's following the specifications pretty well where we have our preview of today's workout. We have streaks. We have the weekly goals. We have an overview of like what the training plan is. Like we completed the first four week foundation phase and now we're in this first hypertrophy phase. And then if we actually click on that hypertrophy phase, it brings us into an overview of like where we are at in the plan. And again, oh, it's going to do this, by the way, if you're working in the middle of it. I'm just going to run through this real quick. So we're back here. It's showing us where we are in the phase. Now, there's small little things I might want to dial in about this. I don't love the color palette is the, is the big thing. But a lot of this, I mean, I think it looks really, really nice, to be honest. And so telling us what our block focus is, where we are in the block, uh, we could say start the workout, brings us in, has a, a warm up that we can run through. We could probably add things in here like timers. We can say begin the workout. These would be nice hero images that we could have. I could ask it to go in and actually generate like actual dummy hero images for all of this. But overall, I would say like pretty impressed with it, uh, given we just prompted some features in and gave it no real direction. And I think it looks pretty professional. Again, I've used actual apps that make millions of dollars a year that look worse than this. And so I am, uh, I'm pretty pleased with it. It's still going through and doing stuff over here. But for 30 minutes on the dot, which is the amount of time we gave it, this is looking pretty tight. I, I think it's nice. I would go in now feature by feature, start really thinking through what I want this to be, change up color palettes, um, refine like the actual user experience. But again, on the whole, pretty impressed with this. So let's see what we got out of the superhuman side. We asked it to add in a compose feature and we asked it to add some more of the shortcuts. So let's see what we actually got. So if we were to do a command C, it opens up the compose, which again, I mean, this looks really nice. I, I'm honestly like pretty pretty impressed with this. It also has this AI improver thing. Um, pretty cool overall. Let's see what other ones we did. We have archive. We can archive emails. We can delete emails with the hashtag. I don't know how I would do hashtag. Yeah, shift. Okay. Um, go to previous emails with J and K. I mean, this is pretty, pretty nice. Again, pretty nice for just messing around in 30 minutes without a real conception of what we were trying to build. To begin with, pretty impressed. So safe to say, I think this is where a lot of these tools are going to trend, by the way. They're going to start really focusing on the UX and the UI experience in addition to being able to actually build the thing because these two things are like inextricably linked. If you were to think of all of the components and everything we've built on here, this all, like building a back end and the services for all of this stuff it really depends on like us having that thing in the design in the first place. And so the, like the UX and the front end UI and the creation of our back end, like those things need to be planned at the same exact time. We don't go and just like build out all this functionality and say, Hey, now how do I make it look good? That is a recipe for disaster. But again, overall, I think this is pretty, pretty awesome, pretty dope tool. Now let me know in the comments if you think this would be a good follow-up video because we can go in here and hit design and then we can actually convert this full UX into a functioning application. Now that would be pretty cool because then we get into setting up databases and integrating with services and, and all of that type of stuff. But overall, really pleased with this. Safe to say it is worth integrating this type of thing into your workflows. And I'm going to spend a lot of time thinking about how I can integrate Replit Designer and even Gemini 3.0 Raw into my own build processes. So that is it for this video. Make sure to subscribe if you want to see more stuff like this. I'll see you in the next video.